and we're talking about Henry the Fifth, directed by Laurence Olivier from 1944. Mm-hmm. So, RJ. Last week uh, on the outro, I made a comment about how we were cleaning the joint up a little bit. We were going to uh-huh. class things up a little. Uh, uh-huh. And how it's like, yeah, we're, we're back in my yard uh, watching classy films. <laughs> well, are you ready to eat your hat on that one? Oh, yeah, man. So, man, um, Jared. boy, I so I had never watched uh, a Laurence Olivier uh, Shakespeare thing uh like honestly yeah, probably like, the um, only thing i really remember about Lawrence olivier is he plays a uh jewish uh, nazi hunter in the film the boys from brazil have you seen that mm-hmm. movie you lent me that movie. yeah that's a that, pretty rad that, fucking that, movie. that movie is fucking awesome that's like yeah. an all-time banger right there um so mm-hmm. i but i've never seen like young Lawrence olivier or, or movies that he's directed i don't think um so i was kind of going into this kind of like eh, well, I think it could be pretty cool. We'll see. I was kind of like not looking. I wasn't super excited about uh, mm-hmm. watching the movie, kind of going in on whatever day it was on the weekend. I was kind of like, oh, I got to watch this. I got to, it's like, oh, it's over two hours long. Uh, I got to get out of it. But then I got a little excited because I didn't realize this movie was in color. And I was kind of like, oh, cool. Yeah. Like I was looking at some of the color shots I saw and I'm like, oh, neat. It's, this is going to be like Adventures of Robin Hood, which is mm-hmm. like a really cool, jaunty movie. Have you seen Adventures of Robin Hood? Nope. So that, is that a future creep? Uh, no, it's not part of the. Well, it might, it might be. It might be in that uh, that uh, laser disc collection. Uh, now that I'm thinking about it, but I don't know oh. if it is. But anyway, so that movie is like super fun, enjoyable, thrilling, uh, beautiful to look at. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was kind of going into this, kind of like, yeah, this is going to be exciting. It's going to be like real <laughs> a real jaunt. Um, yeah. So. Henry V, uh, this movie is an adaptation of uh, the William Shakespeare historical play, Henry V. Right. Um, I'd actually just watched kind of like a story that touched on this stuff when I watched Orson Welles' uh, Chimes at Midnight, which is a future creep, like in 800 episodes mm-hmm. from now. And when yeah. I was watching it, uh, I kind of felt lost with like the, the Shakespearean stuff. Like I'm... Mm-hmm. Mm, to uh, 12 years removed from the last time I read Shakespeare. Um, and so listening to it, I was kind of like, what is going on? But generally speaking, like um, like Roman Polanski's Macbeth is like one of my all-time favorite movies. I love that mm-hmm. thing a bit. But also, I'm, I, I love that Macbeth play a lot. Um, and the film Julie Taymor's Titus starring Anthony Hopkins, that is also like one of my, like, I love that movie. Um, yeah, great, great piece of filmmaking. Uh, I I really like uh, that Shakespeare play Shrek. Yeah, that's a that's good. My that, that's a good one. I like yeah. that. I like that man in the donkey suit. Uh, yeah, he, he's Eddie Murphy's very good in that. As a he does donkey. as the jester. Yeah, yeah. That's good stuff. Um, so uh, that being said, mm-hmm. I boy. I, I didn't enjoy this at all. <laughs> just just say it, man. Just say it. This movie fucking blows. This movie sucks. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I like, boy, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know what went wrong, why this is. Okay. I, I kind of understand why it's, well, RJ, I haven't told you that. Have I told you the sad news that there's like two more Lawrence Olivier Shakespeare adaptations that we'll be watching? Uh. Fuck off. Because we got Hamlet and Richard III <sighs> coming one day uh, down the pike. I don't um, care. Um and uh, so I don't know if uh, Henry V is a precursor to those in their pacing and storytelling and staging, staging and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I, I am dreading those days because boy, this yeah, this movie sucks. <laughs> yeah, um, it does. Because you know, I was like, <laughs> I haven't even t- I haven't even done a plot synopsis. But you know what? Because this movie doesn't really have much of a plot. Because it doesn't. Because so this whole movie. And correct me when I'm wrong. So. The movie itself, it opens up in 1600 London. Uh, uh-huh. And I, this is kind of I was like, oh, I know. Like my English history, like or my English classes that I took back in like 2008 are coming back because I know that's the Globe Theater. I know mm-hmm. that from drawings. And I'm like, oh, this movie's like a period piece. And then there's like a 
period piece within, within it. Within a period piece. Yeah, and I thought, that's kind of neat. Yeah. I really liked the shot over, like, yeah, kind huh? of, like, the diorama of, like, 1600 London. I thought that was pretty neat. And I was kind of mm-hmm. like, oh, this is kind of, like, I didn't expect this at all. Uh, and then you were like, oh, we're going to watch a play um, mm-hmm. we're going to watch people watching a play <laughs> and yeah. sure enough, that's what happens. And it's all in very, uh, like, it's like, it dumps you right into Shakespeare language yeah. and you're like, uh, I have no idea what these people are saying at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we get a scene with like, uh, who I learned from Wikipedia, the archbishop of Canterbury and the bishop of Eli discussing the current affairs of state. <laughs> um, and then uh, yeah. Lawrence Olivier, I'm told, he enters. He's Henry V. Uh, he discusses this the state of France. And then a gift is delivered to Henry from the French Mm-mm-mm. Dauphin. <laughs> the gift turns out to be tennis balls, a jibe at Henry's youth and experience. Offended, oh, Henry, yeah, I, I, whatever. And then Henry sends the <laughs> French ambassador away and prepares to claim the French throne, a throne that he believes is rightfully his. So because of this, this slight, he decides, you know what? Fuck you, France. I'm going to invade mm-hmm. you. Um, and then pretty ball. Huh? Yeah. And then oh, fuck, I don't know if the like, shit, shit happens for the next two hours. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a battle that's like, I, I remember like, there's definitely a point like an hour into this movie where I was kind of like, well, this is at least like resembles like a movie at least when it stopped being later weird. on. Yeah, like a full hour in, and this movie yeah. plays like it's an eternity, and then mm-hmm. and then like the big battle happens. He wins. He just fucking like elbows the guy off his horse, and that's the end of the day. Yeah. Um, and then we get this like really long prolonged courting scene of Prince Princess Catherine that just goes yeah. on and on. And on gets a little aggressive t- too near the end. Yeah, he's I, like, "Come on, baby, give me a little smooch." He's very shouty, very shouty. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah. So, um, the the so that this for this movie being a Technicolor film, uh, it doesn't look uh-huh. impressive at all. Like, I'm not sure if it's like the restoration of this is like really not not great, but I thought this movie looked pretty crappy, like for the most part, like compared to other stuff that I've seen from this era. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe, uh, because this was filmed during World War II, uh, they had to cut costs. They had to like, uh, ration out, uh, film production stuff. And so maybe, maybe, and maybe that's why this movie, I don't know. It's not like, the, it's not like the costuming. It's just like the actual colors of this just look like not good at all. Mm. Um, and I don't know, uh, I'm not whole, I'm not into the whole iambic pentameter. Do you remember iambic pentameter RJ oh. from your English classes? I remember that uh, from uh, the old drama classes in junior high. Yeah, you Our do. drama teacher uh, taught us some Shakespeare and uh, his whole jazz. Mm-hmm. So I, I remember, friend. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So um, that's about all I've got to say about this movie. Um, did you know, RJ, that Winston Churchill instructed Olivier to fashion the film as a morale-boosting propaganda for British troops fighting World War II? Yeah, I knew that. But you know what I think? I think that's horseshit. I think that's just some way that they can explain why pe- people should give a fuck about this old, like horrible, boring movie. It's like after the fact, they're like, yeah, with Churchill it was like, like, do this. It's like... I doubt it. I bet Churchill watched this movie and was like, this movie fucking sucks. The making and release of the film coincided with the Allied invasion of Normandy and push into France? Hmm? Well, it's because all the English were trying to get away from this fucking horrible movie. That's why they took off to Normandy. I I can't believe that uh, the the country that made this movie won the war. (laughs) Yeah, I know. It's surprising, too. Um, Well, I just have to say I am really glad that uh, you got yours this week with all your hot talk uh, about uh, being in your house and you're the Shakespeare man and you're watching fine art again. Uh, this movie sucks. Uh, but I am happy that you agree and you didn't try to like... Yeah, Not that you would, but be like, oh yeah, this movie's got some merit. <laughs> this movie sucks. No, this movie sucks. I, um, I didn't like... So, um, yeah, go continue. Oh, I was going to say, Say if people want to know uh, my first impression of this movie, I put it out on the <laughs> Creeps Instagram. Uh, it was blowing up. Everyone thought it was a really hot take. Uh, my first note was just basically, "Who the fuck cares?" 
Uh, I was like 40 minutes in, and that was the first thing I wrote down because it's like what you were saying. It's it's so fucking hard to like get into this. Um, cause like I don't think I'm a big dumb dumb. I think I got some stuff in my back pocket. I can watch these movies, these uh, period piece movies, and I I have read some Shakespeare, so like I kind of know his dialogue and like yeah. that old English. I do know it a bit, mm-hmm. but I just found this movie so fucking hard to follow. Yeah, um, it's so boring. There's yep. a scene in the fucking theater which I also thought was cool. I was like, oh, it's a theater. That's kind of interesting. But then there's there's a scene where it's basically like there's a laugh track in the movie and it's like oh that's weird and then there's one scene where there's three dudes and they're talking at the set away from the audience and you can't even hear them and it was just like i don't know if this is like a super clever like depiction of what it's like to see actors in the theater or if it's just really fucking lazy and they like didn't have the audio for like the guys talking away from the camera so i thought that was pretty weird um there is uh, a scene where a guy in a big suit of armor gets lowered onto a horse. That's kind of <laughs> cool. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I did think that was cool. There's also a scene where a guy's playing with a ball and cup, like a, a ball on a string in a cup. I did think that was cool. So I'm giving credit where credit is due. Uh, there's a scene where a guy says turkey cocks. And uh, another guy's like, you're a turkey cock. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? And then I- at the end of the movie, a, do- a guy goes into a barn and steals a pig. And I was just like, what the fuck is this movie about? Like like you were you're saying with the synopsis or the plot, honestly, when the movie ended, I was like, I don't even know what really happened. Mm-hmm. This guy got pissed off, so he invaded France. That's it. Yep. That's the whole story. Yep. And he took France, and then they like – apparently there's like – I was reading weird notes. I, I, I've never read this play. Um, yeah. There was a period of time where I was like super into like – were wanting to get into Shakespeare and I had these like I had these plans of like reading all the historical stuff because I'm like yeah I love fucking love like English history like it's like super Uh fascinating and uh I think I was like after reading like Game of Thrones and like I want to read the real the real history the War of the Roses Mm -hmm. um but uh I didn't uh because life exists and I don't have time to read that and I'm not I'm not I'm not going to be an English man um but yeah I don't know like this, it's the telling of this movie. Like it's it's awful. Like mm-hmm. Lawrence Olivier. I'm not sure if this was his. Hmm. Let me look that up right now, folks. Was this Lawrence <laughs> Olivier's first film? Oh, hey RJ, did you know this yeah. movie was nominated for Best Actor for Lawrence Fuck. Olivier, yeah. Best Score for by horse, William Walton, maybe. Best Art Direction, uh, and Best Picture? It was nominated nah. for and. Fucking Olivier, he, because he didn't win any of those things, he got an Academy Honorary Award for his, quote, his outstanding achievement as actor, producer, and director in bringing Henry V to the screen, unquote. He got, like, mm-hmm. special recognition because of this movie. And uh, uh, another little... Nope. F- nope. Uh, Olivier's Henry V is widely considered the first Shakespeare film to be both artistically and commercially successful, which I suppose is why it's included in the Criterion Collection. Um, and there's like, apparently this movie does have its fans. Uh, they're just not on Letterboxd, as this movie, not unlike Summertime, RJ, has mm-hmm. no fans at all on Letterboxd. Hey, at least Summertime's a real fucking movie. Yes, and it, you could, it, like it actually, I know you didn't I, I like could, it. Well, but you know what though, like you could watch I, I, it. Right? I can. Well, the thing is though, like I could think of like I could. I know what that movie looks like in my mind's eye. It has like a visual yeah. identity because it's it's. I guess that's one thing I could say about the movie. I just didn't care about the story, but I remember it looked really good. Yeah. This though, fuck the direction of this is like what a mush mushy movie. It's like the, it's the stereotype of like shitty old movies that people have. People, mm-hmm. if people think of like, here's a period piece from 1944, and people go, this yeah. is what they would imagine, I think, when they're like, I don't mm-hmm. want to watch that. And it's like, well, for good reason, because this movie, ugh. But hey, no. Pauline Kael yeah. called this movie, quote, a triumph of color, music, spectacle, and soaring heroic poetry. They're full of shit. They're uh, t- and they're totally full of shit. Nobody would think that. <laughs> Nobody would think that. Even like some pretentious fuck who's like, oh, this amazing triumph of cinema in the 1944. Like nobody <laughs> would think that. It's because when did uh, Beauty and the Beast come out? Uh, 46? Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. And that, that movie's fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. That movie's amazing. And this movie is total fucking garbage. <laughs> 
And there's movies that came out even okay. like 20, 20 years before that that were better than this. See, okay. I wouldn't let's see. I wouldn't say it's like absolute garbage. I would say it's just yeah. like it's just so boring. It's just it's boring. It's, it's so boring. It's like it's this movie's not trying to like do anything like to like win me over to uh yeah. I don't know. Uh, RJ, I, I, know. I, I didn't like this at all, and I can't believe that, like... I'm fucking glad you didn't. It, it, it made me, like, question everything. <laughs> that's, well, so, uh, that's why I started watching, like, fucking comedies all day. Like, not, what, nacho what, Libre? Watching Popstar. And, <laughs> like, I was like, I gotta watch something, like, just, like, like something else than this, because this is well, bonded me out. Yeah, no, seriously. Yeah. So I'm looking, I'm looking over, like, the movies that, like, were from this era, from the 40s that we've watched for the Criterion Creep. Citizen Kane came out in 1941, and like you know, yeah. it's like one of the the greatest films ever made, and it's just like sure. just like total like achievement of like everything technical. Uh, 1946, sure. Beauty and the Beast, just stunning, um, like a uh, movie about like I don't know, just a depiction of like the imagination and like movement and great performances, so memorable. Uh, great Expectations, which like I don't know, like I didn't like like a whole lot, but I'd. It's like mm-hmm. a movie. Yeah. It, it it's felt still like a good I, movie. I, I was in. It. I was like, I could follow along with it. And then like Oliver Twist, which like, to my preference, like I think that movie is like really amazing. And like, it's a movie. Like it actually like <laughs> operates yeah. as like a, a dramatically. Um, and then like yeah, exactly. Henry the Fifth is just like inert. Like it just like assumes so much that like you really know this stuff. And it's just not a good. It's not a good movie. Like it just doesn't tell the story well. It doesn't tell in a uh, dramatic way. And okay, I mm-hmm. I intended to watch Kenneth Branagh's as Henry V uh, from 1989, just because like I was like I was planning. You know, I always try to watch like the uh, the companion movies to these. Yeah. But exactly. after this, it just gutted me. It, I didn't want to watch anything after this thing. I didn't want to like think about this movie anymore i didn't want to be bummed out yep. by another like incomprehensible movie and who knows i will eventually watch that movie um because i've heard it's really good but yep. i mean i you... thought that henry v in the criterion collection would have been pretty good as well but here uh-huh. we are here we fucking are <laughs> yeah here we are we all look like fucking idiots for buying into this criterion thing it's like saying uh, this is a good experiment for you and me because I always just trusted that movies in the Criterion were good. But now I know, you know, a lot of those movies aren't good. I don't know why they're fucking there. <laughs> and this is a prime example of that. It's just like movies like Walkabout and fucking Sid and Nancy. It's like, why is this even in the fucking Criterion? I don't get it. <laughs> because of circumstance at the time it came out? Who, who gives a shit? Time, right? Times change, I guess things i'm gonna change your time how does that sound <laughs> the, the 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 real question rj is how does how does henry v stack up with salo i don't know they were both pretty fucking painful to watch i'd probably put them on par hmm. no I, henry v is better than salo what <laughs> go well you're not gonna it it doesn't matter jerry if you compare anything to salo or walkabout i'm just gonna say it's better than either of those two fucking movies because i hate those so <laughs> bad example but no this is actually this is gonna be pretty low on the uh the old criterion list for me the ranked um, list which i mean people probably would have expected because uh i ranked armageddon at like the halfway point and everyone's like who's this fucking asshole but uh People, I, I bet people would have expected me not to like this boring ass movie, but uh, I'm glad you didn't like it either, because it's not just me. It's not just it's not you. just me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So nice. I'm glad you didn't like it either. <laughs> I don't know. How about those haircuts, though? Those old men. Oh, this sweet bowl cuts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the sweetest bowl cuts. I did like that. Um, I don't know. There's some stuff that's all right, but on the whole. 90% of this movie is just so boring. I started watching it last night, Jarrett, and I fucking fell asleep halfway through. <laughs> I fell asleep. That's never happened before in a Criterion movie. So this this movie has the rare honor of being the only movie I've actually fallen asleep in. So there you go. See, I'm, I'm, I'm mostly just bummed that this movie is not going to unseat Salo as the, the bottom movie. That's, that's, that's not right. It's going to take quite a bit to unseat Salo for me mm. so I don't know maybe when we get to your buddy John Waters movies 
I actually I might like those. I don't know. Is there anything grosser than Salo? Probably not. Well, there's stuff that's grosser. They're they're, they're not in the Criterion collection, I don't think, though. Um, exactly, because it's gross. So why would it be? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, so RJ, uh, tell us more about your uh, experience with Shakespeare in your life. Uh, I took drama in grade seven, eight, nine. Yeah. And uh, I was a drama kid. Not really a drama kid, but uh, I like I liked being goofy because mm -hmm. I was like the chunkier kid, and I was like. Bleh! So you had to like compensate somehow. So it was uh, a little wacky, a little goofy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, our drama teacher uh, made us do Shakespeare sometimes. Huh. So I learned all about the Globe and the Thames, <laughs> and uh, you know the Shrek and the the Pan and all that stuff. So <laughs> the Pan. Much fun. I don't know, man. Shakespeare's Shakespeare. Bill Shakespeare. Yep. He's all right. Like um, I don't. know. No, that uh, Romeo and Juliet with John Leguizamo, that's pretty nice. <laughs> that's what everyone remembers him for, right? Uh, yeah, I forgot he was in that movie. I, I forgot about, I forgot entirely about that movie. Well, you're going to watch it soon, baby. No. Uh, but no, I like Macbeth and Hamlet. Um, I like a lot of Shakespeare stories. I mean, and they're, all the other world does. Like, isn't uh, The Lion King just Macbeth? Or Hamlet. Mind King is Hamlet. Same with that hit show with Sons of Anarchy. That's Hamlet too. Everything's you just, Hamlet. Yeah, everything's Hamlet. Or, or or these other Shakespeare stories. You just put it into a different genre with different things. But I like Shakespeare, but uh, this Henry V, fuck no. I don't know. Maybe if I saw it in a different form, it'd be okay. This Lawrence Olivier guy is full of shit. Yeah, I, I hope. like that John Denver. I, I hope he gets better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, me too, man. I do. Uh, yeah, as a first outing, like, I, I just like I have nothing to say about this movie. Like, I don't Neither, know. That's fine, I, man. Neither I, I, do I. I, I couldn't be arsed to like find out more. I could look up Lawrence Olivier and his life and times, but hey, man, I think people boy. will appreciate that we're we're cutting it straight with them. All right, mm -hmm. this movie stinks. Don't even bother watching it unless you want to be a completionist and you're. You're trying to do the whatever we're doing, the this watching the movies hoochie. thing. Yeah, this is this is definitely a uh, a void. Okay, so okay, it is. His, it was his first film. He only made okay. he only made five. Uh, let's just take a look here. So Hamlet, uh, that'll be next up for us. Uh, that's a while away from here, and you'll, you'll get to watch Mel Gibson's Hamlet at that time. So I, I, it's already queued up, baby. I was gonna watch it this week, but uh, I'm glad I didn't because this episode would have been tainted. Tainted. Uh, and so Hamlet's made four years later, um, and I've already I've seen it's in black and white, and I've seen some still photography, and it looks uh, a lot more interesting. And then Richard right. the Third. Um, that's about like fascism, I guess. <laughs> and he, he has to play, oh. he has to play a real creep. Um, and then we could even watch the, uh, who is it? Um, uh, Ian McKellen. He plays Richard the third in a like world war two updating of it where he's a Nazi. Mm -hmm. That's a good time. I'm going to watch him in apt pupil instead. Cause oh. he's a Nazi in that yeah. also. Yeah. So yeah, Lawrence Olivia yeah. has only directed five movies. This is number it's one. Five too many. And, uh, yeah, it's just, yeah. Stagey. Uh, looks, I don't know, doesn't move anyone in through the action. Um, mm -hmm. doesn't even try to like welcome the viewer into it. I don't know. No, I, th I think that's the perfect, uh, cut for, uh, like the tag for this episode. It doesn't even try. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, Lawrence Olivier. Yeah. I'm glad. I no, wish that's you... fine, man. We don't. <laughs> I was going to say, we don't got to pad an episode. This movie stinks. No, no. Fuck it. Yeah, fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck but, it. But ARJ, hey, so what, yeah. do you, what do you want to hear? Do you want to hear who hated this movie or who loves this movie? I would say give me the pretentious assholes who think they love this movie, even though they're just, they're dinks. Highest. Like, well, actually, I don't know. Do okay. one of each, maybe. How okay. about that? Sounds good to me because I did yeah. that. Uh exactly. Chris gave this movie one star and he says, if you like boring movies, you'll love this one. <laughs> oh, awesome. There I like go. that review. Uh, yep. Joe Gola gave this four and a half stars and just said, great acting and great filmmaking. Doesn't get much more legit than this. Oh, I beg to differ. <laughs> I bet that motherfucker ain't even seen Shrek 2. That's legit. <laughs> 
I don't know uh, why I'm talking about Shrek so much. Tonight. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Five stars from Glorbus. <laughs> Rarely Ooh. have I seen a film that crafted such a unique and magical world where actors would seem to be moving within a painting, stepping in and out of one artifice and into another. The effects are both two- and three-dimensional and straddle the line between stage and cinema, blurring the lines between the two. The film opens with a breathtaking shot of London in the time of Shakespeare, panning slowly until eventually the camera descends into the open ceiling of the famous Rose Theater. I know the techniques that would have been used and combined, but I honestly cannot tell how they were combined to create this magnificent opening through the stage performance which is chock full of period detail uh, and creates the stage experience while also making it about how a play would have been mounted in 1600 we fall again through another window into the cinematic telling of the Battle of Agincourt I cannot stress how amazing this film looks or how flawlessly it draws you into a nesting doll like structure that travels through time the performances are amazing Olivier acting the hell out of the title character and giving the rousing and quotable speeches as if they've never been delivered before and combining every available trick of visual effects available to him at the time. This would have been made in 1943 Stop. and 44 with the war raging and yet the film is rich and magnificent spectacle ah. that still holds astounding power to this day. I want this film on Blu-ray. It is a masterpiece. Fuck that person i'm gonna step in and out of their artifices is that what they said uh yeah. jesus christ what an asshole man uh. what, i honestly i'm sorry if if someone listens to this show and they like that movie i'm sorry but i really don't get it i feel like all these people who are t- like claiming that it's this masterpiece they're just full of it you're full of it you're fucking full of it and did he say the rose? Isn't that one of the other theaters? Because there was there was three, right? There was the Globe, and then there was two others. Yeah, something like that. I don't well, know. I don't know if I missed something, but I, I was under the impression it was the Globe. So yeah. I don't know why this guy's bringing up the rose. So mm-hmm. what an asshole. Uh, Flickers in Time gave this four and a half stars. Lawrence Olivier's debut as a director made Shakespeare as stirring and accessible as it would have been on stage and threw in some very innovative cinema to boot. Oh, sure. I'm sure that's what it was like. So our buddy uh, Glorbus that you you were telling me to stop reading, uh, his favorite films are Raiders of the Lost Ark, Seven Samurai, Sorcerer, and uh, Black Narcissus. Hmm. I don't. I don't buy it. No. I think those are. I think those are planted picks. They're not his real favorite movies. <laughs> I, I bet. I bet his real favorite movies are Fight Club, uh, Scarface, uh, The Fifth Element, and uh, <laughs> I don't know Shrek Three. There you go. They're bringing it all together. Yeah. Um, from Garrett Oppenheim, who gave this two stars. Gets two stars because the first 20 to 30 minutes set in an authentic-ish Elizabethan playhouse is really cool, but the rest of it is almost unwatchable. I do not understand how Laurence Olivier became one of the most well-respected actors of his generation. The man was a terrible actor. I mean, mm-hmm. I wouldn't say that. Um, like, I don't know. He Wait, just... was he Henry? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he was fine. Yeah, like I, I wouldn't like. I have no like his him as an actor. I, I don't even. That wasn't the problem with this movie. I think it's just like it's him as a director that's like the problem. It just like it's inert. Yeah. There's nothing to like get behind in this thing. Yeah, exactly. It's just it, you're from the moment it starts, you're, you're fucking bored and you, you can't understand it. And there's nothing that pulls you into it. And yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe it's just lost in time. But I mean, all the other Shakespeare stuff holds up pretty well. Well, yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's just this interpretation. It's just, yeah, I, I, think it's, I think it's, yeah, I think it was, it's a, it's a bad one. Yep. Well, there you have it. There you it go, was, folks. It's a bad one. I think this is the, I don't know. This is like the first dud, I think for me, like where I'm just like, for you. Yeah. Well, I've had some duds so far. Yeah. This is mine though. I don't know. Not, like, even like summertime, I was like, I think this was like, the, I think the, like, up to this point, like summertime and urban getting, they're both like, I mean, but you know, so this, so I didn't get to go back on this yet. Okay. So Armageddon, yeah. uh, Armageddon's like shit, 
but it is entertaining shit. And like, I wrote like yeah. two pages of notes, three pages of notes, just watching that movie. Cause it's just like endlessly like moving and just, there's so much to make fun of. Mm-hmm. But this movie, I squeezed out about six, seven lines. And, uh, I, I just, I it was just, a chore. yeah, it was a chore to watch. Like really unpleasant. Yeah. Uh, do not recommend. <laughs> yeah. Just bad movies, man. Mm-hmm. I, I think I'm going to, once you're a middle-aged woman and you're looking for something else, I think you're going to appreciate summertime a little bit more. Yeah. Maybe. Summertime's way better than fucking, uh, sit and Nancy and picnic at Ann and rock. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I would say that like, I, Doesn't I, I really, the, 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 Hey, uh, sit and Nancy was shot by our boy. Yeah, I know Big Deeks is on there, Big but Deeks you can is hardly... on there, and it looks great. Yeah. The movie's got some it, pretty memorable imagery. Um, it does look good. It looks really good. I mean, it's just kind of yeah. like it's really long. It, that's like the biggest thing with that movie. It hasn't yeah. aged, it ha- and it hasn't aged well. And I don't know. It's like it's yeah. not. I don't know. Uh, what's the other one that you mentioned there? Oh, Picnic and Hang Rock. Picnic. Um, it's like again, that movie's like really nice to look at. It's just kind of like mm-hmm. it loses mm-hmm. its way. Whereas like, but I was like super. I was more disappointed by how it just like doesn't go anywhere for, after like the first like opening bit. That's really strong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, this movie just it never like engaged me once. Like it's just like it was boring basically from start to finish. And uh, I don't know. I think like to for modern sensibilities, uh, this movie's like pretty well the opposite of that. And uh, you have to mm-hmm. like, I don't know. You have to like have like a modern hand to like communicate that stuff and get those lines like close ups and like people like looking at the camera. I don't know. Just like there's like other there's things. That that like people figured out um right that i think worked really well uh later on but here not so much but i don't know uh we won't really have a choice we'll have to give uh, Lawrence olivier a try one day down the road and hopefully I'm get and so- i and i really hope that it's better than this i'm gonna get so drunk on spaghetti for that episode <laughs> that i won't even notice what i'm doing that's my hot take on Lawrence yeah. olivier well, folks, that's it for this episode. Uh, <laughs> join us after the break as we hope for a brighter future.